um, the parable of the two arrows. I'm sure you guys have heard this before, if not from me, from somewhere else. So it's kind of a Buddhist parable where, um, you know, something bad happens and you um, get shot with the first arrow. So it could be something tiny, like you stub your toe, it could be something big, like you lose someone you love. So anywhere along the way, when we when we get um, shot with that first arrow, there's pain. Um, and then the, the parable goes that, you know, which do you think would be, if you got hit with the second arrow in exactly the same spot as the first arrow, which arrow do you think would hurt you more? Um, chances are you would think that the second arrow would hurt you more. So the second arrow really represents um, our reaction to the first arrow. So, you know, a lot of times when something happens to us that's painful, we can have, um, you know, a reaction to it, like worry or frustration or blame or criticizing someone or anger or fear, regret, shame, blame, guilt, um, all sorts of things can come from uh, having pain. And um, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. So um, the second arrow represents what we have control over. So it's our reaction to the first arrow. So just like all things, if we sit and let an arrow fester in us and we don't attend to the wound, um, whether that means pulling the arrow out, opening it up to air, cleansing it, you know, whatever it is, um, we, we can let that wound kind of fester and then the second arrow would hurt even more. So part of learning how to prevent the suffering of the second arrow is really learning how to be present, um, to let feelings move through us, and to also remember that this is a temporary state that all things shift and change if we allow them to. So part of the second arrow is allowing that first arrow to move um, so that we don't have to hold on to the pain that we experience. Um, so, you know, what are your second arrows? What kind of reaction do you have? Do you have kind of anticipatory grief? Do you have anticipatory worry? Um, anticipatory frustration. You know, there's so many things that can uh, prevent us from fully living each moment when we have um, the history of a wound within us that kind of prevents us from being free. So um, let's work on those second arrows, you know, the, the ways that we just assume life is going to go a certain way because of how it's been in the past. Um, <clears throat> So let's go ahead and sit up straight and tall and think about the difference between pain and suffering. <clears throat> Excuse me. That of course, we're going to have pain painful moments in our life on the regular. We're gonna have painful moments in our life. But truly the sense of suffering, sometimes we can, have, we can manage to lessen. So suffering is optional. Let's sit up straight and tall and find our bodies. So come into a comfortable seat. Believe in your healing. So if you have something happening in your body or mind or spirit right now, can you believe in the capacity to heal from arrows? Even if it's slow, even if you have to be very patient for healing to come. Drop some weight down into your pelvis and broaden your base of support. Feel into what's available in your spine right now. Are you comfortable? Do you have a stance, a seated posture that brings ease into your body? Can you come into a deep sense of knowing your breath? Always remember your breath is your gateway to this sense of being able to move things through you, as well as touching into what your experience is right now. The breath is here and now, always here and now.
If you have something kind of binding your breath, see if you can find it, loosen it. Maybe you need to shake things off and move. Maybe you need to move deeper into stillness. Drop your shoulders, feel a sense of ease through your skull and your face. When you're ready, place your palms together and let this mudra of centering unifying, give you a resource to offer an intention to focus on something maybe that has nothing to do with uh, trying to prevent the second arrow from hitting you. And then release your hands and let's come onto our back. Okay, so. Come to lie down. See if you can sense into as you become supine, sense into the full body now. Kind of check in with yourself. How's your body? Have you paid attention? Is this your is this your first moment today where you've noticed, paid attention, taken stock? So do a little temperature, daily temperature reading, a little body weather map to just feel how are you today? All right, so let's stretch our arms overhead and feel into that reaching of the body. So stretch the right arm, stretch the left arm, see if you can get into the hips and open up the sides of the body waking Maybe you want to wiggle your fingers or wiggle your toes. Maybe you want to roll your ankles around or stretch your limbs in any specific way. All right, and then bring your knees into your chest and rock around a little bit. Check in with your back. How is that today? Okay. All right, let's open the knees up and close them up. So just feeling the knees move away from the midline and toward, you can do circles or semicircles, whatever kind of movement helps you to open up your hip joints, loosening up a little bit of range of motion in there. All right, and then right knee into the chest, stretch your left leg long on the floor. And then to invite a little bit of energy into your core, keep your knee in toward your chest and stretch your arms overhead if your shoulders allow, if not just out to the side. And just feel into the core of your body. Okay. And then when you're ready, switch sides, left knee and hands onto the knee at first. Feel that deep hug, a little squeeze in the knee joint, a little squeeze in the hip joint. And then maintain that, hold the knee and start to use your core for it. Reach the arms overhead or out to the side, whatever is a comfortable place for your shoulders. Engage through your core, lengthen through your spine. Stay breathing. Okay, and now we're just going to, and you can put your arms down at your sides if this is more comfortable, but we're just going to go back and forth. You don't have to straighten your leg all the way. You can tap your foot down, bending your knee so the foot just comes down onto the ground like this. Um, lifting one knee up toward the chest, the other foot down. If you want to straighten your legs, you can. That's harder on your back, so just be where you are. A little bit of core, just waking up the center of the body, turning the furnace on. All right, and then two feet down onto the ground. Knees bent, let your back relax, soften your torso. Knees go wide, feet go wide. Then windshield wiper your knees left and right. Put your arms wherever you want them to be. As we drop our knees in the head left and keep them there for a moment, stretch the right arm away and turn your head right. Take a deep breath. Exhale. And then when you're ready, switch sides. Drop knees right. Stretch left arm, turn head left. 
deep breath and then release it away. Stretch all your limbs, stretch, stretch them out wide, roll your wrists, send your, your uh, ankles again, open and close your fists, wiggle around your toes, whatever feels good to wake up the edges and then knees into the chest, head up, squeeze into the midline. Inhale, arms and legs wide, squeeze every muscle you can while you're out there, hold your in-breath for just a moment, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then the exhale, relax the breath, all the breath out, hold the exhale, hug into a ball and squeeze, squeeze even your face. And then relax your body down onto the ground. How you can keep your knees bent or straighten them and just notice what has changed, even the subtle little things that we've done. What has changed when you sense into your body? Are you, are you more present in your bones? Okay, let's go ahead and roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. So find your way onto all fours and let's move through a cat cow. Okay, so rounding the spine, push the floor away and then arching the spine. Let the chest move toward the earth, tail and head lifts. Find the breath through the movement of your spine. and start to move that posture around in any way that feels good. You can wag your tail, you can roll through your shoulders, just let your spine become a little freer, especially if you've been not, if you haven't moved much yet today, just try and notice what's available in the uh, various movements of your spine. All right, take your knees a little bit wider apart, anterior tilt the pelvis, sit bones high and wide, and drop back. Feel the deep compression in the hip joints. Let the back be soft. Relax your forehead toward the floor or on the floor. Drop into child's pose. Relax for a moment. All right, let's walk the hands over to the left side of the mat and feel the right body, side body stretch open. Enjoy all the space, wake up. Create a little sunbeam coming out through your ribs. Okay, come back to the other side and open up your ribs here. Sunbeams, open up the space between the rib cage and let your sun shine out. Or let your sun shine in, whichever you need. Okay, come back to center, come up on tall fours, swish your spine around again. Maybe pick up your feet and move your feet left, right. You're on your knees, just loosen up your back. And then as you're ready, Dog pose. So find your way. We're still just warming up here. So feel into the feet. Maybe lift one foot and drop the other down like you're kneading like a cat. Maybe the same with your hands. See if you can find the presence on the ground. Where are you touching? How is the feedback from the floor into your body? Can you start to uh, turn on your capacity to yield? Reach the heart to the pelvis. Hug the hands toward each other. Make sure the, you're weighted in your index finger and thumbs as much as your pinky fingers and outer wrists. Relax your neck. What do you love about this pose? What's free here? Is your head free? Can you relax? Is your breath different when you're upside down? All right, and then walk your feet forward and come into Uttanasana. Fold. Feel free to roll your shoulders, shake your head, shake your tail. Just find any movement that is really nice on the body. Kind of loosen things up. All right, inhale for a halfway lift. The spine gets longer. Stretch the backs of the legs. And then exhale and fold again. Push off your feet. So when you come up, bend your knees, drop your hips down, and lift up through your chest. Reach the arms to the sky, take care of yourself. If you're at all dizzy, squeeze to the midline, open your chest and open your chest even further to cactus the arms, hug the shoulder blades toward each other, give them a good squeeze and then exhale and bring your forearms to touch, tuck your chin. One more time, feel the back body start to awaken, squeeze and then exhale and round in. 
and then release the arms. Just shake them out a little bit, shake your wrists. I feel like we haven't done the, um, uh, the nerve glides for our arms in a while, which I think is a really important thing for many of us to be doing on the regular because we have so much repetitive use with our hands these days. So stretch your arms straight out. Palms are facing the wall. Try to lift your fingertips toward the sky. Breathe deeply. Let's lift one ear up toward the sky and the other ear up toward the sky. There's so many different ways to move into this nerve glide. You don't, this is, I'm just scooping a whole bunch of flowers with one hand by doing this at the same time. You can, you can very simply do this with your hand against the wall. Um, and have that feedback loop as you move your head. So there's lots of different ways of doing this. This is not the only way. And then release and shake that out again. This time, turn your palms out, fingertips down, stretch your arms a little bit behind you. So your hands are a little bit behind the line of your shoulders. Breathe and then let's just lift the ear here. Just a little bit different. How's your breath? Okay, and then shake one last one we're gonna do. Just shake your arms, okay? Uh, I'll get closer so you can see what I'm doing with my fingers. Um, A-okay, fingers. Okay, we're gonna start with our elbows out to the side. Turn the palms up, pull the pinkies down. Try not to let the elbows come in, keep them wide, and then release them down. So you may not go very far, you know, you may end up only halfway there and that's okay. This stretches the ulnar nerve, ulnar nerve. So that, you know, innervates your pinky side of your hand. So I'm you sure you can feel that nerve glide. It's like a little dental floss for your nerves. How's your breath? Elbows are wide, chest is broad, palms up, pinkies down and then relax. Okay, melt, let your arms dangle and grab onto your outer elbows and just let your arms hang for a moment. Let your head hang for a moment. Breathing in, melting the breath out. Come to a halfway lift, stretch open through your legs, thigh bones move back, femur bones up, up, up to the hips. Feel now your feet, just like we felt in the hands, See if you can feel your feet open up that much. So we have a lot of broadness in the bones. Find your breathing. And then isometrically, pull your feet apart from each other. Start to wake up the line all the way to the outer hips. And then exhale and melt and fold again. Inhale, halfway lift. Sit bones high, pull your feet apart isometrically. Exhale and melt back down. Let the neck relax. Relax. Step your left foot back. Right foot's going to come forward. You don't have to use blocks, but you can. Find your breathing. Rise all the way up to crescent lunge. Put your arms where breath is guided best. Breath is guided best. Find that place. Steady your feet. Yield in and ground. Maybe your arms come high, maybe your hands are on your hips. All is well, no matter what you're doing. Press your front heel deeply into the ground, turn your glutes on, and then exhale, and release your hands back down onto the ground or blocks. I like blocks for this. Straighten your front leg a little bit. If you wanna pick up your toes, you can, and then bend the knee back in. One more time, straighten the leg a little bit, opening up the hamstrings, bending your knee. Back foot comes forward, fold in half, relax, melt the neck. Inhale for a halfway lift again. Exhale and relax back down. Turn your thighs on. Let's do a chair pose. You can stick a block between your thighs if you so desire. This can help stabilize your knees if you have a little knee issue going on. And then decide, do you want your arms back? Do you want your arms out? Do you want your palms together? Do you want to lift your arms up? There's so much variety of what poses can offer you depending on what you need today. Sink in. 
drop weight. What is your history with all these poses? So, you know, when you come into a pose, what's your initial reaction? Oh, I love that pose. Oh, I hate that pose. Oh, why do we have to always do that pose? You know, you know what is your, what is your history? What is your imprint of these postures? This is just a teeny example of how we have this anticipatory reaction, which is the second arrow. Sometimes it can be positive. Yay, we're about to do that pose. Okay. Start to feel the furnace of your thighs. So let things heat up a little bit. Drop weight into your heels. And then stand up straight. Exhale and fold forward. Left foot forward, right foot back. If you like blocks, have them handy. Stretch into the calf of the back foot. Ground into your front heel. Rise up when you're ready. Arms go anywhere the body is supported. So let's say you have a shoulder issue going on. Maybe you just want one arm up. Maybe if you want symmetry, but it hurts to hold your arms up, try taking some platter arms, bringing your palms up and bringing them out so that back body works without having to have your arm overhead. So just find what's best for you today. Relax the base of the skull, drop weight into the front heel, feel the breath, slide the shoulder blades down, relax your neck. All right, great. And then let's release the hands down onto the ground, straighten the leg for a moment, find your breath, tuck your chin. It doesn't have to go all the way straight. Bend your knee when you're ready. All right, and then two hands come down onto the ground. Dog pose. Now when we come into this pose for the second time, how is it? You know, are you a little bit more alive in your legs? Do you feel some weight coming into your feet? Let's come forward into a plank. Back to turning the core on. Find your breath. What would it feel like if you had a little micro bend in your knees so you're not pushing your, thigh, your thighs up at your knees? Lift your femur bones at the heads of your femur bones. Inner spiral, the inner thighs up toward the sky. Not so much that you turn your feet in or feel knock knee, but just a sense of wideness in the back of the pelvis. Breathe here. Try not to hold the breath as you hold the pose. You can put your knees down to support your shoulders on the way down. And let's come into Sphinx pose. Elbows under shoulders. Open the chest up. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. And then release and melt. Take your hands wider out in front of you and rise up. Keep the back of the neck long. Stretch through the legs. Feel the stretch in the belly, but also the support in the core. So we're not just sinking and falling into the lumbar spine. And melt and fold back down. Come up on top for us. Swish, swish your spine. Find some ease. We're going to come on to our right side and lie down. Try to find a little bit of a knife edge so that this creates a need for balance. Then when you're ready, lift the arm in the air. Left arm in the air, right arm is supporting your head, unless that, it doesn't feel good. So, you know, you can use a different prop under your head if you want. And now we're gonna lift the leg as well. So see if you can stay on your little knife edge. What creates support here? Can you use not your neck, okay? Can you use your core? Can you use your glutes? Can you feel the stability coming from the strength of your quads engaging instead of having to, you know, push your neck down? Okay, relax your head. Let the mid to low body do most of the work here. Use your core. Lift your side waist off the ground a little bit. All right, and then relax and melt. Okay, bend your knees a little bit further in. Put your hand on top of your head. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, lift your feet and your chest a little bit. And then inhale to come back down. 
So just isolating the low, one side of the low back a little bit, that quadratus lumborum muscle. Exhale on the way up, feet come off the ground, knees stay down. Inhale to come back to the floor. Try not to yank your head around. So we're really trying to work with the side of the body, not with the neck. Where's your breathing? One more. And then roll over onto your back. We will do the second side, but just in a moment. Check in with your neck and make sure it's staying relaxed. Interlace your hands behind your head. So hold the base of your skull. Anytime we do core work, we have the um, you know, imprint of our high school sit-ups in us where we kind of, nobody told us what to do. And so we just yanked on our head. So we're gonna remember that our hands are a pillow for our head to rest on. So lift your head off the ground a little bit and then rest your head in your palms. Feel that your neck does not have to do the work here. Bend your knees, feet flat on the ground. Our tops of our shoulder blades are off the floor. And we're gonna, you, you can have your elbows toward the sky, but see what it might feel like to open them up a little bit out to the sides. And then we're gonna take the elbow toward the left hip and then come back to center and the elbow toward the right hip. Now, if you've heard me talk about teacups on knees before, drop your weight. So imagine a teacup on each knee that you're not wanting to spill. So our femur bones are rooting into our pelvis as we go back and forth from one side to the other. Try to rest the head in the hands. How is your breathing? Notice, you know, this tendency to want to hike the hips. So we're kind of trying to keep the hips stable and let the upper body move toward the hips. All right, and then relax. Melt back down onto the ground for a moment. Breathe well. So, you know, that'll engage obviously your obliques, but the back of the body is kind of the emphasis in that posture more than the front. Now let's get the front side of the obliques to wake up. So we're gonna bring our knees up in the air, like reverse tabletop or knees can be a little closer to your chest as well. I'll give you two choices for this. Keep the head in the hands, rest the head on your pillow. We're going to, well, you can do this um, with legs straight up in the air or with knees bent. So with knees bent, we're gonna lift the right chest, not the elbow, so we're not pulling the elbow over. Right chest toward left knee, straighten right leg, and then right knee comes back in. Left leg straightens left chest toward right knee, back and forth. If you're doing this with straight legs, we're just having our legs up. I can't do this, I hit my furniture if I have straight legs, but you're just dropping a straight leg down and then switching. So however, the bent knee version is a little bit of an easier version. So if you are doing the straight leg version, be very mindful that your back is in a happy place. How are you breathing? Okay. Are you sensing that your head is on a pillow? See if you can feel that sense of your core being a cylinder that you're not a front body or a back body or a side body, you're a cylinder. How is your breath? All right, and then relax and melt your head down onto the ground. Arms come down at your side, feet are bent, or knees are bent, feet are on the floor. Big breath into your torso, into your belly, into your pelvic floor. Open the gateways of your diaphragm. And now we're going to come to lie down on our left side. Left arm is supporting underneath your head. Legs are straight. Find your breath. And then when you are ready, you can start by lifting your arm up in the air and then lift your leg as well. So be on your little knife edge. Try not to let your neck do the work. Use your core. You just turned on a lot of muscles in your core. Can you feel them stabilizing you? Let your outer hips do some work, your glutes, your quads. See if you can hold support in both legs, not just top leg. How's your breath? Can you relax your neck? Play with your balance. So try really to be on an edge. 
and then relax. Bend your knees toward your chest a little bit more. And then, you know, we're really trying to work with the side of our body here. So we're gonna bring our hand over our head and put our hand, our fingers on top of our skull. Lift your feet and your chest. And then inhale to come back down. Exhale to lift up. Try not to let the neck do the cranking. We're trying to work with the side of the body. To light up the quadratus lumborum, that deep low back muscle, one on each side of your back. Can you feel that on the right side of your body now? Let's do one more. And roll back onto your back. Knees rest, our knees bent, feet on the floor. Let's just turn our head left and right. Check in with your neck. Did it take a lot of tension in these postures? Inhale and starfish your body out wide. Deep breath, exhale, knees into the chest, tuck into a little ball. Roll over onto your side. Now we're gonna step this up one level off the ground, okay? So let's start this with our shin parallel. You can always put your hand on a block if you need it. We're on our right side, right hand, right knee, and left foot line up. You can have your right hand a little bit forward of your right shoulder, or you know, um, toward your head, a little bit more toward your ear, and then right under your shoulder. Open the chest, drop the shoulder blades away from the ears, find your breathing. Now lift that leg in the air. It doesn't have to go high. Maybe it's like an inch off the floor. Start to work and light up the outer hip muscles. Support with your cylinder of your core. And then release. Now take pivot, same side. Pivot your shin so that it's in line. You can shake out your wrist if you want to. We're going to have our wrist, our knee, and both our feet on one plane. So now we're on the knife edge of balance again. If you need a little bit off, that edge, take your right hand out to the right a little bit more. Open the chest and don't worry if you're like, whoa, I'm going to fall over. Just, you're not going to go far if you fall, right? Just put your other hand down. Drop the shoulders away from the ears and see what it might feel like to lift the leg. If you are going to fall, lean forward and put your other hand down onto the ground. You can put your hand on a piece of furniture. You can put your foot on a wall. There's lots of ways to support your balance. Press your shin into the ground, use your core, use your outer hips. This is a lot harder to have your shin or parallel than perpendicular. Come back down onto all fours, a cat cow round the spine. Shake out your wrists. Okay, we're almost off these hands. So let's start with our shin perpendicular left side. Left shoulder blade is down the back, supporting. Your hand can be under your shoulder or a little bit forward of that. Open the chest, find the breath. When you are ready, whoops, I'm hitting furniture, lift your leg in the air. Okay, so open chest, use your outer hip muscles. It's hard work to hold yourself here. Breathing well, shoulder blades down the back. Try not to take tension in your neck. And relax and melt. You know, if you can't be on a knee or a hand, you can always do this pose just tipping against a wall like this, and it gets a very similar action in the body. So if your wrists are unhappy or your knee is unhappy, that's plan B. The other thing you can do is you can take your forearm. Don't put your forearm on a high block. The lowest version of the block Widthwise underneath your forearm so it's nice and stable is also a way of doing this posture to support you if your hands don't like being on the floor. All right, so now everything's parallel or yeah, parallel. So we have our wrist, we have our knees, our knee, and both of our feet. And then when you're ready, arm comes up in the air first. Maybe your foot comes just an inch off the floor. Maybe your foot comes way higher off the floor. <laughs> See what kind of support do you need to find your way into this posture. 
Notice, is this side easier? Is it harder? Relax your neck, shoulder blades down the back, support with that left shoulder blade, lift the leg in the air, turn your toes forward so that they're not up in the air, engage the cylinder of your core. Okay, relax. Come out of there, child's pose. Relax your back, shake out your wrists, roll them around if it feels nice to do so. Breathing well. If your wrists feel okay, come to dog pose. If your wrists are like, I've had enough, then just come to stand. Eventually, we're all gonna find our way to standing. So if you're in dog pose, lift your right leg up, swing it through to a lunge, and we're all gonna turn to be on the side edge of our mat. Okay, so long edge of your mat here. If you like a block for triangle pose or personal kanasana, go ahead and grab it. We're gonna start with triangle pose. Tip the pelvis, extend the spine. Maybe you like to have your hand on furniture. You know, this is a wonderful way to do triangle pose instead of coming down so far. So find the support that you need. You can be high with your hand on your leg. You can be low with your hand on your leg. So find the work that's right for you. Shoulder blades stay down the back. Open up through your chest. Ground into your back heel. Breathing deeply into the spine. Remember, we're tipping the pelvis. We're not trying to keep our hips even. Reach your femur bone up into the hip joint. And now from here, we're gonna bend your knee. You can either keep your hand on a block or you can put your elbow on your knee and find your variation of Parsville Kanasana. Maybe your shoulder doesn't like arm overhead and you'd rather have your hand on your hip. If you tend to push the hip, the back hip forward, take it on back. Find that line that's easy on your pelvis. You don't wanna have a lot of strain in the ligaments, either in the front or the back of the pelvis. So find a sense that your pelvis is neutral, that you're working, grounding into your feet, working the muscles in your legs, but we're not overextending through ligaments. Find your breath, shoulder stops. How's your neck? Is it allowing, are you allowing your neck to be passive or is it time to take over like it usually does? Press into your front heel, wake up those glutes and your hamstrings. All right, and then rise up and straighten your leg. Turn your feet forward. Let's go to the other side. Same two poses, triangle pose first. See what it feels like to dole this pose out just right. So maybe you don't wanna tip very far. You know, maybe when you tip really far, you, you, have, you start to get stress in your pelvis or your SI joints or your back. So find the place that's just right for your body. Okay. Bring your breath into your posture. Round through your feet. Feel your heels and your toes. Externally rotate your front femur bone. Let it roll in the hip joint a little bit. Stay grounded through your big toe as you find that external rotation. The shoulder blades move down the back. The spine grows in length from crown to tail. Keep the roots of your feet alive and well. Steady your breath. How is your breathing? What do you love about this pose? What's challenging about this pose? What do you avoid in the body? Okay, come on up, bend your knee. Elbow comes on the knee or hand on a block. Bring the arm in front of you and up overhead if that's available. If it's not, the hand can be out, your hand can be on your hip, your arm can be resting on your thigh wherever your body takes this posture into. So start to know the difference between avoiding something because you don't like it or it's hard or avoiding something because that's what your body needs. So only you can tell those subtleties of what's right. So try not to avoid, hey, you know, avoiding things really doesn't get you far. In the Yoga Sutra there, in the Sutra, the version of the two arrows is, uh, there's a Sutra, I can't remember what number it is, but it says that the, the suffering of the future can be avoided by the actions of today. 
you know, what we do right now in this moment avoids the suffering of two minutes from now, one second from now, and 50 years from now. So what are you making a choice right here to release, to open, to not hold on to gripes, grievances, to be fully present in your body, to trust your body, to care for your body. All right, let's come back out of the pose. Turn your feet to the long edge of your mat and heel toe your feet in. Okay. All right. So just hop a couple times, shake out your hands, wiggle your legs, just loosen things up. Okay. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Tip your weight into your right foot, reach your left leg straight out to the side. Bring your arms for some extra balance and open yourself up. Find your breath, relax the shoulders. Breathe into wherever you can tip. Engage through the cylinder of your core. The outer hips are working, but so is your core. Okay, and then relax, melt back down. Let go of that. You can shake through your arms or your legs. Ground through your left foot. We're gonna reach out through the right. Bring your arms into the posture as well. Reach through the crown, ground, so root to rise. Spread your wings, all of them, all six of your limbs spreading. Toes pointing forward instead of up. Tip to your edge, find your balance point. Keep breathing, relax your neck. Is it trying to do the work for you? And then melt. Loosen that up. You do not have to jump off the floor. You can, okay? <sighs> Relax your neck and shoulders. Stand into Dasana for a moment. Now let's just tip back, whoa, onto your heels until you feel your edge, and then tip forward onto your toes. And just notice your core kick on, that transverse abdominis. Just notice what the core does for you to hold you steady. Keep breathing despite the need for some core support. All right, inhale, arms lifting to the sky. Bend your knees as much as you want to. Come into Uttanasana. Shake your tail, relax your back. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, come back to plank pose. What foot do you always take back? Take the other one back first. Try to find pathways in the body that are traveled less. Hug into the midline with your hands, with your feet. Imagine a block between your thighs. All right, put your knees down if you need it. Come all the way down to the ground. Cobra pose, roll the shoulders back. Up you go. Exhale, down you go. Put your hands underneath your forehead, curl your toes under, kneecaps off the ground, legs wider to the edges of the mat. Inhale and lift your legs. Relax your neck, breathe. Try to have even effort in your two sides. Notice if you have dominance and then melt. Pick up your feet. And just windshield wiper your feet left and right, let your back relax. Come up on tall fours, keep moving around to support your spine and find child's pose when you're ready. Let your back relax. You know, a lot of times when we use the side bodies, the core of our sides, that cylinder, our back can, um, you know, take a lot of front of the work. So let your back soften. And then as you're ready, lift up. Dog pose, stretch out your hands, curl the toes under and find dog pose. Isometrically pull your feet apart from each other in this posture, find those outer hips. Push off the hands, root into the inner hands as much as the outer hands. Soften your neck, come into your breathing. 
Walk your feet forward, bend your knees, put your hands on the outer knees, feet are hip width apart. Push into your knees with your hands, hands uh, push into knees, knees push into hands. Okay, so find that work. Now do the same with the feet. Isometrically pull your feet apart. Extend, lengthen through your spine, and then relax that and stand all the way up. Take your legs wide, turn sideways on your mat, legs come wide. Okay. I always run out of room when I do Ardha Chandrasana in this little tiny living room. So turn your right foot out so that it's pointing to the long, short edge of your mat. Grab a block. We're going to, so always, I'll, I'll keep saying this until I make sure the whole world knows it. If you start in a pose that's forward and then open up and then come back when you are weight bearing on one hip, it's a lot of strain on the labrum of your hip joint and it over time will wear and tear. So whenever you do an externally rotated pose where your femur bone is externally rotated in your, in your joint, like triangle pose or Virabhadrasana two, when we come up into Ardha Chandrasana, we wanna have that angle already set. So we're gonna come up and we're gonna come out in the same plane. So our femur bone does not internally and inter externally rotate while standing on that leg. So you never want, or you want to try to avoid this where you come into Ardha Chandrasana and then turn your hips and place your foot down. This is moving from external to internal rotation of that femur bone and it's not very healthy for the joint. So let's start in triangle pose or however you wanna start, bend the knee, look at your foot and make sure it's still pointing to the short edge of your mat. So spread out your toes. And then as you're ready, inhale to lift up into Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Shoulder blades down the back, cylinder of support in your core, outer hips working. Feel the crown reach to the foot, the foot reach to the crown. Relax your neck, shoulder blades down the back. Stick inside the breath. Soften the knee you're standing on. Don't worry if your balance is all over the place, it's okay. It's just, it's just practice. Okay, and then out the way you came in. Come to stand, pause for a moment. Breathing. Switch to the second side. Left toes turning so that we're pointing to the, the, the short edge of your mat. Try to keep your foot in that position the whole time. Stay in the external rotation of the leg. Hop up onto that foot. You can always do this pose with your back against a wall or your foot on a wall or a piece of furniture for extra balance support. Reach the arm in the air if you want. Feel the sense of engaging through the outer hips. Feel the cylinder of your core to support you. Find the length of your spine. So heel and crown move away from each other. Soften the knee that you're standing on so that you're hooking ground without hyperextending and locking. Try to open up to wherever your body goes. Take the neck away from the tension pattern. Stay in your breath. Are you gripping your toes? Give a death grip on the floor or loosen things up. Be okay with falling. Be okay with moving. And then find your way out of the pose and come back to the front of your mat. Pause here for a moment. Enjoy two feet on the floor, hip width apart, have a good base. Enjoy. Feel things move through you, we're not stuck. So balance poses, if they teach us anything, they teach us to stay in the flow to not death grip ourselves into hardening into something, anything. Try not to hold on to that first arrow. Just let things move through you. The breath is your friend for this. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, bend your knees, relax your back. You can sway your hips if you want. Relax your neck. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, 
can come down onto your knees for a child's pose. And relax your spine. Feel your legs squeeze a little bit. Let them enjoy this. Okay, now you have a choice, your choice, pigeon pose or reverse pigeon pose, or, you know, laying on your back with thigh over thigh, kind of like um, eagle legs. So your choice, if you need support, you can take support um, for pigeon pose. Right leg comes forward or left. If you're, it doesn't matter, whichever leg you've already started with. Notice, it, I didn't say which leg, so, you know, I have the habit, as do most yoga teachers, of leading with the right. I'm not sure if that's just because we're a righty dominated world or if it's just habit. Um, but whatever side you have begun on, wide sit bones, no matter whether you're on your back or your front. Relax your neck. Now, if you have something to put underneath your head, it will give your neck a little bit of support so that you can find some ease. Once you get situated in, in your posture, whichever it is, can you rest? Can you feel the length and softness in your spine? The full cylinder of your breath? The ease in your neck? Rest your head. Let's go ahead and come out of that posture and find your way into the other side. So depending if you are in, it doesn't matter what pose you're in, and maybe you need to do one pose on one side and a different pose on the other side. Take whatever support you need so your pelvis is balanced so that you're not straining. You know, you don't want to overdo uh, a pose like this. This is a very um, extreme range of motion in your hip joint in your SI joint. So you want to make sure that you are comfortable and we're not, you know, kind of teetering on the edge. If you feel like you can't breathe or if you are so, you know, um, tense because you have to hold yourself, it's good to have support. But if you feel you're so gripped because if you let go a millimeter, something's gonna, you know, not be okay, then you're too deep in the posture. There should be a little bit of a sense of being able to let go. Even though you're structurally supported, you're, you should have the capacity to surrender. So notice that for yourself. And if you can't surrender, shift something. Come out of the pose, go less deep, switch to a different pose, work with the breath, consciously relax the body. Notice if your neck likes to take all the effort. It's so helpful. Our necks just, they're so helpful. They just want to do so much for us. So give gratitude for all those hardworking muscles in the back of your neck and shoulders and give them a break. And let yourself find your way out of that pose. And we're going to all come down onto our back. Now to rest. 
<clears throat> bring your feet on the floor for a moment. Bring your and then bring your knees up and rock. Okay, so what do you need? Do you need a twist? Do you need a happy baby? Do you need to just start Shavasana right now? So take whatever posture your body is calling for. Listen when you ask that question, what do you need? The more you start to trust the answers that your body gives you, the deeper your intuition grows. eventually find your way to Shavasana. There's absolutely no rush. But as you get to a place where your body finds it's ready to rest, take any support that you need. What, what do you need? Do you need support under your head? Do you need support underneath your knees? Do you need no support? Do you like to spread out wide? Do you like to have your calves up on a couch? What is your favorite way of being in a restful state? So as you come to rest, remember that you know pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Learn to let feelings move through you. So practice this art, become like a river or a waterfall or a flowing stream in your Shavasana where every moment is just a temporary state and shifts to the next moment. Imagine yourself floating down an obstacle-less stream. Your body is deeply at ease. Maybe you prefer to have the visual of being very still and letting water, warm water, flow through you, over you, under you, around you. Balance that beautiful play between stillness and movement inside your own breath.
Let's begin to deepen our breathing. Come into the flow of your breath. See if you can sense movement inside of yourself. Also feel this deep pool of stillness. Find our way into movement. Maybe start small, moving fingers and toes. Maybe you can turn your head from one side to the other to make sure your neck is easeful. And eventually coming over onto your side. And coming up to sit. Bring your hands together at your heart. And let's just make a commitment to not allow the second arrow, our reactions to the first arrows. Can we give space? Can we move over a little bit? Can we, can we allow that arrow to pass us by? Offer your energy to another. Send your love. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Blessings on the day.